How's it going? Right on. I'm going to draw attention right now to my armpits just so we can get this out of the way. I want you all to know I'm not nervous. I'm just terribly out of shape. Thank you. I realized recently there's been something missing from my life for the past few years, something that I used to have as a child that really motivated me. And that's Mr. T. <laughs> there was a time where if you wanted me to do something, the best way to make sure it got done was to get Mr. T to tell me to do it. If Mr. T said, clean your room, you better believe that room got cleaned. Mr. T said, eat your vegetables. I was eating all of the vegetables. <laughs> Mr. T once told me to never talk to strangers. It's been 25 lonely years. <laughs> but I have kept that promise. Please release me from this pact, Mr. T. I did not think this through. I was eight. Turns out most people were strangers. I did not anticipate leaving grade school for other schools. The reason I listened so much to Mr. T is because he was my goddamn hero. You couldn't turn around in the 80s without seeing Mr. T somewhere. He was everywhere. He was starring in Rocky III. He was headlining WrestleMania with Hulk Hogan. He was coming into your house every week as part of the A-Team. You could wake up on a Saturday morning and eat Mr. T cereal, which tasted a lot like Captain Crunch in the shape of the letter T. <laughs> and then you could sit down and watch the Mr. T cartoon where he fought evil with the help of the U.S. gymnastics team for some reason. I had a Mr. T action figure that if you pulled the string on his back, he would talk to you. When you pulled the string, mostly he just pitied fools. <laughs> or told Hannibal he wasn't gonna get on that plane. I would walk around the house in my very own cut-off jean vest, pitying fools left, right, and center. <laughs> you have to understand, in the mid-80s, Mr. T was as recognizable an authority figure as your parents or a police officer. <laughs> there were several PSAs on TV in the 80s telling you if you encountered stranger danger, find a parent, a cop, or Mr. T. <laughs> Mr. T would beat up drug dealers trying to force you to do drugs, which 80s PSA had me convinced was a rampant problem. <laughs> I have never had a drug dealer try to force me to do drugs. Most drug dealers are very paranoid people and do not bring up drugs in casual conversation. Much less do they approach children with drugs they are trying to force them to do. In the 80s, Mr. T released two, count them, two rap albums that he collaborated on with Ice-T. The other Mr. T. <laughs> they were terrible rap albums filled with incredibly positive messages. <laughs> Mr. T had one song about loving your mama and another song about proper oral hygiene. Because that's the kind of terrible rapper Mr. T is. A super positive, terrible rapper. Mr. T is the most positive man in the world, which is why I think we need more tea. Mr. T defeated cancer through sheer positivity. He wasn't gonna let that jibba-jabba slow him down. I started wondering what happened to my old friend, Mr. T, and I started looking it up. And Mr. T has been keeping busy, folks. There's a lot of tea out there in the world. Mr. T is still working right now. Mr. T has a show on the BBC, on British television, called World's Biggest Fool. 
It is Mr. T hosting a series of fail videos from the internet. It's like Tosh.0, but a lot nicer. Because it's Mr. T. It's just Mr. T showing up going, these fools are going to try to practice parking next time, and then 10 minutes of parking fail videos. Oh, these fools are going to think twice about skateboarding, and then 10 minutes of skateboarding videos. But he's Mr. T. He can't just have you laugh at people. He's got to leave you with a positive ending. And at the end of every episode, Mr. T reminds us, we had a good laugh at all these fools. But remember, you're only really a fool if you never try. At least these people tried. That's Mr. T right there. Even if you ruptured your ball sack on the internet, you have T's respect because you tried. You tried to grind that rail, hotshot. <laughs> Mr. T has a new show out, and I swear to God, it is a home renovation show titled, I Pity the Tool. <laughs> I couldn't make that up if I wanted to. There's an app that goes along with that show and that pisses me off because I don't think we need a home improvement app for Mr. T. The app we need for our phone for Mr. T is like Siri, but T. You just ask T questions that are bothering you and T gives you a straight answer. Like, Mr. T, should I get this Big Mac drunk at three in the morning? And Mr. T will come and be like, you don't want to put that garbage in your body? Respecting yourself starts with respecting your health. Cut out that jibba jabba. Get yourself a banana. Potassium's good for you. <laughs> the best thing I found looking up my old friend Mr. T was a real show where Mr. T fixed small businesses. He traveled the country helping small businesses out. It was like bar rescue, but instead of bars, it was any job ever. <laughs> and instead of a celebrated industry professional, it was Mr. T. Mr. T would spend a week with this company and he'd spend the first few days working the job to remind Mr. T what it was like to have a real job. Because he's been Mr. T since the late 70s. He went from bouncer to professional uh, bodyguard to Mr. T and never looked back. So he works the job for a few days then has a meeting with the people. He gives them advice like, Sheila, you gotta stop being so passive aggressive. He's slowing down the work day. Dave... You gotta pay your employees more. The cost of living's gone up. Respect your employees, they'll respect you. And what was amazing is people were listening to Mr. T. <laughs> sobbing like they were on Oprah. Just something I completely understand because if I met Mr. T, I would cry like a child. I would paw at his legs and say, please release me from this pact, Mr. T. Thank you very much.